For this uh, background effect, we're going to be using watercolor to create a drip background. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play the video so you can see the steps in a time lapse here. Um, but I'm starting out and just going across the top of my page where I want the watercolor to start to drip down. And you'll notice that I'm not using color yet. I'm just starting with water first and then I start to add the color. So that way I can uh, figure out where I want the water to drip. Uh, and then as I'm adding color, I can kind of build it so it's not as dark at first either. Uh, and that way it will overlay nicely on top of uh, the drawing if it does happen to overlap much. So I'm just going to have a few of the drops overlap the drawing here. And then I'm going to go in underneath the drawing, almost like adding a shadow, and have uh, the color drip from there as well. So I'm just starting out with the water. And I'm bringing down the water and almost forcing where I want the water to drip down. Uh, that way it can be somewhat controlled with where you have the watercolor um, coming off of your drawing. So again, I'm just going in around the base of it and filling areas in, trying not to drip too much over the drawing because you still want that to really stand out. Um, you can do a few coats on certain areas that you want to stand out more than others, but now I'm going to go around the opposite side. I would give that bottom drip um, a little bit more time to dry. I just wanted to go right away though so that these do blend a little bit and you can see everything at once for the video. But again, I would let um, one area dry for maybe a couple minutes before you flip the page. So now that I flipped the page, some of those um, watercolor drips from the bottom started to bleed back up. Uh, but I added a different color to the top and now I'm going to go back in with a little bit of red underneath just to kind of thicken some areas of the, um, of the watercolor there and make it stand out a little bit more. And again, I'm flipping it to the side now so that I have um, some watercolor dripping from different directions. And you'll notice that since I didn't really wait for much area to dry, some of it's going to start bleeding to the side as well. So that could be a cool effect for yours or you might want to give it some time to dry. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is go in with a third color, and this time I'm just going to use it as mainly the background. And this is something you could have done to start with. You could have um, filled your whole page with just a simple wash of color first, so a really faded background, and then gone with the drip on top, but I decided to do this last. So either way would work. Maybe practice it two different ways and see what you like better. Um, but I'm just using a really watered down color for this background so it doesn't blend or mix too much with the other colors. What I recommend is using only two or three colors on this, so try not to go crazy with your colors. Think about which ones will mix well. Um, so if they're next to each other on the color wheel, they're going to most likely um, mix really well and you'll get a good end result using multiple colors um, for this. But I'm just going back in with a few more layers right around the outside of that object to really make it stand out more. Um, but again, as you're getting started, think about do you want just a really light background first before the drips or do you want to go in and add that last?